In this episode of Creative View Chronicles, we're going to talk about the process of converting a product that was designed for the iPad and the Mac, the big screens, into the iPhone version of it. We're gonna talk a little bit about the code to make that happen, talk about my design thoughts, uh, my thoughts on landscape. Is the iPhone like the main product now? I touched on that a little bit in the last video. And then I'll finish the video by doing a quick run through, like on the phone, sharing the screen, of what each of the screens look like in their iPhone versions. So when it comes to the code, and I kind of touched on this in the last video, but at this point in development, I did a lot of the heavy lifting with the Mac on separating all the business logic and the view models from the views. So at this point, the iPhone is just a UI problem, essentially. And that's the fun part of development, at least for me. I just get to sit here and build UIs, plug in the view model, and it works. Good to go. Um, well, it works, but it may not look great because, again, the screens were designed for big, wide, max, and iPads. They weren't designed for tall, skinny iPhones. So that's where all the effort came into play was uh, you know, tweaking the screens and making them look good on a completely different form factor. Getting them to work and plugging the code in was actually very simple. And the key piece of that whole coding process was SwiftUI's environment variable size class or horizontal size class and vertical size class. A quick 20 second primer on size classes if you're not familiar. Essentially all iPhones and iPads break down into size classes both between regular and compact. So either you're a regular height or a compact height or a regular width and compact width and all the combinations of both. For example, iPads are size class uh, regular, regular. So regular width, regular height. An iPhone, as you can imagine, is compact width, regular height. Um, and then when you're landscape, your compact height, regular width. So again, the combination of regular and compact will tell you like what device you're on, sort of. So that's the primer on size classes. SwiftUI has the size class environment variable to determine what size class you're in. And then you can act accordingly based on what size class you're in. So that is how I determined at the entry point of the screen. And for us, that was pretty much the sidebar, right? When you tap on dashboard on the sidebar, what screen to show, that's the entry point, right? So I check the size class there. If it was size class, you know, compact or with compact, show the compact version of the screen. If not, show the, you know, iPad and Mac version of the screen. There's complex conditionals in there because, you know, Mac OS doesn't have the concept of size class. So I had to do the Mac OS check to make sure before I even check for size class. So the big premise, again, at the screen entry point, check for the size class, and then you can show different views accordingly. And in my case, I have different views for iPad and Mac, and I have a compact version, like compact dashboard, compact income table. Uh, I'll put up the, the folder structure here that you can see. So that's big picture what I did in the code. And like I said before, that's basically it. You know, the, the code was not the hard part of the iPhone. Now, of course, I had to build code to, you know, create the UI for all the screens and because they're different designs, that's different. I'm talking about the coding logic to make the iPhone happen in the same code base as the Mac and the iPad was relatively simple. Let's talk about landscape for a little bit because I got a little landscape rant coming up. But size class was actually huge in supporting landscape. That was the key piece as well. Because like I said, in landscape, you can imagine size, class, height is compact. Right? An iPad's not compact height. In, in portrait mode, we're not compact height. The only time you're compact height is a phone in landscape. Now, for those that are experienced that have done this a lot, there is one little edge case, the iPhone 13 Max, or even not, the, the Max phones, right? The big fat phones. Those, when they're a landscape, are actually height regular. So you get like the iPad version of the phone. That's an edge case. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. For the most part, if you're compact height, you're a phone in landscape. So that's what I checked for when determining should I show a landscape version of the screen or a portrait version of the screen or adjusting the views accordingly. And another key piece of code I got from Paul Hudson was the concept of an adaptive stack. I'll throw up the code here, a little bit going on, but if you just look at the body version down at the bottom, you can see the, the crux of the issue here. You're checking for the size class and you're either putting it in a V stack or an H stack. Like that's basically what all this code does. And that came in handy. You'll see here some examples, uh, a, a simple example to illustrate the point. Um, using an adaptive stack, like our onboard screens, in portrait, we have a picture at the top and then a little blurb saying what the screen does at the bottom. In portrait, that works great. We can imagine a landscape, that wouldn't look great. So that is an adaptive orientation stack is what I called it. So adaptive orientation stack is the code I showed you. When it's in landscape, it flips that from a V stack to an H stack. And now you can see the image on the left of the H stack and the little paragraph blurb uh, on the right. So using that adaptive orientation stack was a lifesaver when it came to supporting uh, landscape. I, I use that a ton throughout the code base. Now for my rant on if you even should support landscape. Because I think a lot of developers think like, oh, it's landscape, I, I have to support it. 
Well, open up Twitter, open up Instagram, try to flip your phone. Like they don't support landscape. At least when I tested it, they don't. Maybe I have a setting turned off, but my point remains the same. There's a lot of apps that you use every day that don't support landscape. And the reason being, and this is a decision you have to make for your product. Uh, if you've ever supported landscape, you know there's a lot of developer overhead. It's a lot of work to make your entire app perfectly support landscape. So you gotta ask yourself the question, is that developer overhead, those precious developer resources that are so valuable, is it worth spending those on landscape, which in, I believe, 90% of the products does not provide a ton of customer value, right? You're just not spending those developer resources wisely. Now, that's not every app, of course. Don't hit me in the comments saying, well, this app uses it. Of course, there are some apps that greatly benefit from landscape, and I actually think Creator View is one of them, which is why I supported it, right? Perfect example. Here's the schedule screen. Portrait, landscape. I think it looks a lot better in landscape. My income spreadsheet, of course that benefits from landscape, as you can see. We're very chart heavy in Creator View, so naturally charts look a lot better in landscape. So I felt Creator View was one of those apps that definitely does benefit from it, so that's why I supported it, but I guess the message I wanna say here is don't support it just for the hell of it. Like actually think about it and make sure your, your product is gonna gain value from it before you spend those precious developer resources uh, on supporting landscape. Now I wanna revisit what I talked about a little bit in the last video on the iPhone actually after I built it and was playing with it becoming like the main way people use Creator View. Cause that was not the plan. Like I said, the plan was for the iPhone to be a companion app couldn't do everything because again, the product was conceptualized thinking you were gonna be on a keyboard and big Mac screen or an iPad and all that stuff. But again, after building it, I was like, shit, this is fully functional. And because of the install base, I think people are gonna use this more than the other ones. So, and I, I touched on like how it's funny how like sometimes the side thing becomes the main thing, talked about in the last video. But what I wanna talk about in this one is like, am I kicking myself for that? You know what I mean? Because what I'm saying is, this product was developed for the larger screens and adapted to the iPhone. Well, if the iPhone's gonna be the main thing, shouldn't I have designed it for the iPhone and adapted it to the other screens? I don't know, I, that's, I mean, I think that's an impossible question to answer. I think you could argue both ways because there are certain screens I would not have done the way I did had I designed for the iPhone first. A, a good example is this, this schedule, right? This full month calendar. I don't think I would have tried to do that had I known I was designing for iPhone first. I probably would have done like a weekly thing or made it bigger and chunkier. I don't know. Uh, same thing with this spreadsheet view, which I know is very small for the iPhone and a lot of people are gonna say it's probably bad because you can't do dynamic type and it needs to be bigger. I get it. But my point is, a lot of the product would look very, very different had I designed it for iPhone first. Um, is that for the better or for the worse? I, we'll probably never know, right? Um, but I think it's an interesting thing to think about. But um, here we are, this is where I am. Uh, this is what we're rolling with. Um, but I'm happy with, with how it turned out, um, you know, the iPhone. Another thing I wanna point out before we do the uh, product recap and what the screens look like is now that I'm on all three platforms, and this is kind of a, something I wanna make sure everyone knows, if you're building a, a product that's on multiple platforms, is one thing to keep in mind is your feature development is gonna slow way down. Right, because think about it. When you're only on like the iPad, like I started out with, oh, cool, that's pretty easy to develop for. If you just develop for the iPad, there's only a couple different screen sizes. But when you're on the Mac, all the different iPads, all the different iPhones, and then landscape on the iPhone, like anytime you build a feature, you gotta make sure it looks good on all of those. So now your feature development, like I said, slows down. So I'm happy with where Creator View's at, the, the initial version of the product. So I'm perfectly fine slowly adding features to it. Again, just a word of advice to those that may be building cross-platform. I wouldn't go fully cross-platform until you're ready to slow down feature development, right? Like if you're, if you're just launching your super basic minimal MVP, maybe keep that to one platform. Now let's run through the app. I'm gonna put up the screen share uh, on the screen. I'm just gonna run through this real quick to show you what the screens look like and talk about some of the design choices I made and, and just talk about it. Uh, so here's the sidebar. This is what you get on a sidebar on a phone. As you can see, it takes up the whole screen. Like it's not like a tab bar on the bottom when you have a bunch of options. You can see you can kind of minimize, you know, business or miscellaneous. You can see how that could grow if I had more options. But anyway, dashboard. Uh, so here's the iPad version of the dashboard. And then now here's like the phone version. You can see these little squares were basically just little puzzle pieces. And all making the iPhone version was, was adjusting the puzzle pieces differently, you know, combining different H stacks and V stacks with these pieces differently. So the dashboard came together relatively simply. And then video schedule, what I had to do here was make the squares of each calendar a lot smaller. And again, you can argue this is too small, right? It needs to be bigger. 
I would not disagree with you, but I'm rolling with this for now. So you can see the, the little indicator dots. That was a change I had to make specifically for iPhone. That means sponsored and there's a note. There's little indicators on the bigger like iPad versions. I'll show it to you here. But yeah, I mean, it still works. You know, you can move stuff around. Let's move this down here to the 20th. Looks good. Um, move this here to the fourth, just getting it all out of order. You can still like combine the two on the same day if you like. Uh, so again, that great drag and drop scheduler. And then, like I said, this is one that really benefits from uh, landscape. So you can see, I think this looks a lot easier to navigate uh, like on landscape there. Um, so back here, income streams. Uh, so this one, I, this is the one I was most nervous about. Right, and you can see three income streams, so that's a decent amount. And by the way, these are ordered by your most impactful into the front. I sort them basically by amount. And then I have the indicator here up in the upper right that I can tap on to pull in that, that side thing. And then of course there's a horizontal scroll view. So yeah, landscape, not the greatest. I, I'll be the first to admit that. But again, uh, oh, the other thing with, I'm sorry, portrait, not the greatest. The other thing with portrait is I have these summary views on the bottom. You can see like the income year to date, et cetera. There's a little, little glitch there, gotta fix that. But in landscape, I had to get rid of those because it was just, it's already cramped as it is, right? Again, supporting dynamic type on this. Well, I'll figure that out later. But I had to get rid of that summer view because it's already cramped as it is. And then, you know, the, the side view uh, comes in on landscape. But, you know, like I said, it's a horizontal scroll view if you have a bunch of uh, streams. So I was kind of happy with the way that turned out initially. Data visualizations, again, these are the charts. So like I said, the charts, we'll go to a year that has like full data. Uh, so the charts here look okay in portrait, but obviously, you know, landscape is where the charts like really look good and you start getting rid of all these and stuff like that. So yeah, we definitely want landscape on the charts. Channel stats, uh, the iPad version of the channel stats is four like quadrants for each graph. We just put up one V stack. So that was pretty simple. What I want to talk about here with channel stats is, I mean, so we did have to make small adjustments. Like this header view for channel stats is a lot smaller. So a lot of the iPhone was making small tweaks like that to views. But for the most part, like these charts, and this is a shout out to my co-founder who built these charts and made them dynamic. Uh, and this is a key part of like, when you're converting something, you know, from a bigger screen to a smaller screen. If you make your component views, like for example, these bar charts are a component view. We reuse them in a lot of places, right? Like you know, on the dashboard, there's a bar chart as well. Um, and if you make those adaptive, it's gonna make your life so much easier when you're trying to support different things. And by say adaptive, I mean like, you know, don't hard code it width of 300, height of 200, because it looks good on most screens, right? If you make it adaptive and, and flow with, with whatever screen size, again, here we got landscape here, so you can see how the charts uh, adjust. It's just gonna make your life so much easier. And that's what I found when building this iPhone app, because we had to do that for like the Mac app and various iPad screen sizes, right? Because the iPad mini is like super small. So it, again, it really made the iPhone a breeze, um, just moving these puzzle pieces around and they adapted. Same thing with these uh, goals uh, things. Again, those are little like squares that adapt versus horizontal or, or landscape. Taxes is just a basic table view or a list, I should say, in SwiftUI. So of course, this is an out of the box list. So that's gonna adapt to landscape, no, no, no problem. And then settings, again, it's just an out of the box form. So naturally that's gonna be fine in landscape too. So again, the big things are make your component views flexible. Don't hard code like heights and widths and stuff like that. And then use as much out of the box stuff as you can, you know, if your design allows for it. Part of the design theory for Creator View is to make it feel like an Apple product, like an Apple app, for many reasons. One, I, want, I love Apple, so that makes sense for me. But also, when it comes to design, like Apple has a whole design language and a lot of out-of-the-box stuff that you just get for free when you, when you go that route versus kind of like reinventing the wheel and creating your own unique custom design, which is fine. Just know that when you do that, you're signing up for a lot of overhead and a lot of extra work. It may be worth it for your product. I'm not saying it's not, but just keep that in mind. Uh, oh, one other thing with the schedule I wanna show you too, this whole start, well, you can see you can adjust your tax rate. Uh, start, count. well, I'll go, to, I'll go to light appearance. You can see that here. Uh, start calendar with Monday. So this was some feedback from some beta testers. So if I go to video schedule, you can see the schedule here uh, has Monday on the left and Saturday and Sunday, the weekend as the two on the far right. Whereas before the week started with Sunday, and ended with Saturday. Um, I guess depending what country you're in, that's different as well, but we added that little feature in there. Again, we wanna make the scheduler the, the killer feature. We'll get there, it's still a work in progress. So that's it, like I said, we're, we're on the App Store for the iPhone, the iPad, the Mac, it's on all three platforms. Uh, still got a lot more updates for you. A lot has happened, but there's the iPhone update. We'll see you in the next video.